in Lighthouse for the second story. This one involves the pity girls. The first one was about Joseph and Maria. And once again, I met up with Joyce Duncan and she walked us through the story and some of the haunted <laughs> stories as well. Take a look. Joseph and Maria's lighthouse became unstable. So they decided to build this, this tower and they hired a man named Hezekiah Pity. He came all the way down from Cape Elizabeth, Maine, brought with him his wife, Mary, and four children, Mary, Eliza, Edward, and Carrie. And I imagine Hezekiah was pretty excited because this is the first brick structure in St. Augustine and nothing in Florida had been built this tall yet. So this was building something that had never been done before. And none of the materials are local. All the brick came from Alabama, the granite came from Georgia, the iron came from Philadelphia, all would have come by boat way out there. So Hezekiah put in a tram, train system, a little tram system uh, on train tracks that went from the construction site all the way down to the water, out on a dock deep enough so the ships could pull up and they would unload their supplies in these huge metal carts, like an old mine cart, and then they would hoist it on up to the construction site. Well, the kids found out that if they got in one of those empty carts at the construction site and released the brake, they would naturally sail on down to the water. This was awesome. They used it all the time. They'd get in the cart, release the brake, whee, <laughs> all the way down to the water. The construction kids were using it. The pity girls were using it. No problems. Except one day, July 10th, 1873, Four little girls got in the cart. They released the brake just how they always had. Whee! All the way down to the water, but this time the brakes failed. That cart went sailing into the water, flipped over, trapped all four girls underneath. There was a man named Daniel Sessions working on the beach that day. We have his eyewitness report. He ran into the water as fast as he could. Have you ever tried running in water, trying to get somewhere It's fast? almost impossible, yeah. Uh, how he ever got that cart flipped back over, I have no idea. But when he did, there were three dead little girls in the water. The newspaper states Mary, age 15, Hezekiah Pitty's daughter. Eliza, age 13, also Hezekiah's daughter. And an unnamed African-American playmate died that day. Daniel Sessions was able to save one, Carrie. She was four years old. She was Hezekiah's youngest. We have records days after the accident. Strange things started happening. Workers would hear children laughing and playing over by that tram system, and they would run over to tell them it wasn't safe. But they wouldn't find anyone. Some workers were required to spend the night on the grounds to guard the equipment. Some of them refused after they woke up with little girls staring down at them, watching them sleep. We believe our girls are here, and they are active. <laughs> During the tour, we have lots of experiences with the girls. I tell my tour group, if you get poked tonight, if your clothing gets tugged on a little bit tonight, uh, we wear glow sticks. If your glow stick falls off your neck for no apparent reason, if your shoes become untied time and time again tonight, that's our girls. We call them the tricksters. And uh, we have had sightings of them in the lighthouse itself. Um, we ha they love to play with meters. Um, we have a lot of meter activity with the girls. In fact, I'm, I'm going to tell you my favorite story with the girls. It was on free time after one of my tours, and I went in the basement of the keeper's house, and I was on the steps going down, and there were two young women from my tour. And they were holding their meters, and they were both red. And they said, we think we have all the girls here. And I said, OK, keep going, keep going, because we start asking questions when our meter goes off. If it's a yes, spikes to red. If it's a no, nothing. They said, we think we have all the girls here. I said, OK, keep going. She said, girls, 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 do you like to have fun? Do you like to have fun? Meters are spiking red, 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 red. Uh, girls, girls, do you want to play a game? Meters spiking red, 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 red. She says, do you want to play hide and seek? Meter goes red and then nothing. She said, girls, are you still here? Girls, are you here? Nothing. She said, oh, are you hiding? I watched her take her meter, walk around the basement. I'm going to find. I'm gonna find you. She wandered all around the basement, got to under the spiral steps. Her meter spiked up to red. She said, I found you. Do you want to play again? <laughs> meter spikes to red, and then nothing. Again, I watched her take her meter. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you. Over in a corner where we have a little table and chairs, the meter spiked up again. She said, I found you again. And then a bunch of people came in the room, and the activity, the noise went up, the activity stopped. 
It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. She not only was contacting the girls, she was playing a game with them in real time. Amazing. If people want to learn more and they want to witness it for themselves, mm. how do they do that? Uh, get your tickets online and get them in advance. Uh, you can also call the St. Augustine Lighthouse and Maritime Museum. Uh, we typically have them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, they do sell out typically a week or two in advance. So you do want to try to get them um, as soon as you know you're going to be visiting St. Augustine. You'll get that two-hour tour. I recommend you rent the meter or you can bring your own equipment. If you have divining rods, your own voice box, your, your own ghost meter, uh, you're free to bring those things as well. Well, Joyce, thank you so much for all of your time. You're your welcome. information and your storytelling. You're welcome. Have a great day. All right, so that was obviously another really cool story. Joyce can tell a story. She is amazing. Wow. Yeah, and it's, again, those grounds have a lot of history, and when people go there, they experience a lot of different things. So I want to share with everybody now our experience. So while we were recording this, and I was learning about the, the Pity Girls, mm -hmm. I want you to look at the camera. Okay, now look at the top and the bottom corners. And do you see how it starts to move? That is the front of the camera starting to shift. And our producer Kendra doesn't touch that at all. Like she doesn't even move that part. So again, I'm listening and listening and watch. <laughs> That was the, what was that again? The lens fell off. That's the front of the, the cap of the camera just falls off. <gasps> and she's talking about how the pity girls are playful and they like to play pranks on people. And, and they stuff just like that. went pop. And then the whole thing just falls off. So you see me like look and then come back because I just wanted to keep going with the interview. Sure. Isn't that oh, crazy? I mean, it's no, like right no. on par for what you would expect them to do. Nope. How interesting is that? <laughs> yeah. So we did sign you up for, for a, a night, night tour. For a night tour all by myself? <laughs> sure you did. I'll bring my own divining rod. You like ghosts and heights. Should I bring my divining rod if I have my own? She they said supply bring them it. there. They have the little meters. Yeah, I know. <laughs> nope, nope. But that was great. And Joyce was great. Yes. And that was very scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have so much more lined up. Stick around. <laughs> more to come.